Okay, hi everybody. This is our monster theory presentation. Please go ahead and take notes and go ahead and submit those to Canvas as part of our online discussion when you're done. So to start us off today, I'm going to provide us with some context for this presentation. I'm going to share Jerome Jeffrey Cohen's seven theses about monsters, so seven big ideas he has about monsters. And then we're going to go ahead and work to apply those ideas to where the wild things are, the text we read last night and discussed in class today. So just for some brief context, the ideas I'm going to share from, with you today come from somebody named J.J. Cohen. He's a cultural theorist and an English professor at George Washington University. And cultural studies is something that you might not be familiar with, but its goal is to understand cultures. And in particular for our presentation, we're going to think about what, what we can learn about our own culture based on the monsters that we create. Okay, So we're going to think about this idea of, of culture and of monster very broadly. So to start with just a quick definition, and I understand that this image could be very offensive, but just hang on for an explanation. So today we're going to think about monsters both as literal monsters, like the ideas about scary, frightening creatures that are non-human, and also the way that people get turned into monsters. So on the left, we have the literal monster, Cookie Monster. On the right, we have a highly offensive rendering of somebody who is Muslim who has been turned into a monster by our cultural imagination. So we're going to think about both kinds of these monsters as we go through our presentation today. And our goal is to really ultimately think about what does where the wild things are reveal about our culture through its monsters? That's the big question we're going to come back to. So let's jump into those seven ideas, those seven theses about monsters. The first idea that I want to share with you is this idea that the monster's body is a cultural body. That means that the monster is a reflection of our culture. So Cohen says that a monster is born at a metaphoric crossroads as an embodiment of a certain cultural moment of a time, a feeling, and a place. That means that monsters are reflective of a specific, a specific place and time, that they incorporate fear, desire, anxiety, and fantasy, which give the monster independence, and that the monster represents something other than itself, so that the monster itself is not the threat, but that the monster represents some sort of threat or desire or anxiety or fantasy. That's kind of a big idea uh, to think about, but just think about the monsters or a representation of our broader culture. His second idea is that the monster always escapes. So that could be a literal escape like Fred Underwood in House of Cards who always gets away with whatever he's doing. Or it could be some sort of a metaphorical escape. So here we have two vampire movies. One Nosferatu from 1922 and a second one Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992. And so what we see here is that this idea of the vampire as a threat lives on over time. So the monster has escaped even its individual destruction. It continues in time. Okay, so to continue, Cohen also argues that the monster is a harbinger of category crisis. So not that the monster is a harbinger of a category of crisis, but that it actually shows us something wrong with the categories that we use to make sense of the world, so the ways we try to sort some things out. So here's a really specific example. This is the monster that you might represent from the movie Alien or Alien vs. Predator or like any of those other hundreds of movies that are called Alien. Here's a description of it. It is a nightmare, defying every natural law of evolution by turns bivalve, crustacean, reptilian, and humanoid. It seems capable of lying dormant within its egg indefinitely. It sheds its skin like a snake, its carapace like an anthropod. It deposits its young into other species like a wasp. So what this author Greenberg is noticing is that this particular alien defies every type of classification system that we use to understand the natural world. So it's showing us that there's a problem with our understanding of the world. So to make that a little bit spe more specific, Cohen shows us that monsters are disturbing hybrids whose refusal to participate in the order of things makes them dangerous and threatens to smash distinctions. 
monsters are that which questions binary thinking and introduce a crisis. So a lot of binaries that we have that you might want to think about applying to our book are things like male, female, foreign, native, things like uh, racial identities, white, black. Those are places where we can look to think about categories that might be in crisis in our book, Where the Wild Things Are. One contemporary example that I can think of that is kind of interesting, I think, is that a lot of people are looking at Trump's popularity within the Republican Party as category crisis. Take a look at these headlines. Trump throws GOP into an identity crisis. Republican crisis may deepen if Trump loses Wisconsin. Sense of crisis envelops GOP as Trump rises. And a lot of that category crisis has to do with the question of whether Donald Trump is really a Democrat, or sorry, really a Republican, or if he's something else. So we can look at those categories that we have today even as being under fire in our contemporary presidential election. So here's our fourth thesis. The monster dwells at the gates of difference. So Cohen tells us here that the monster is difference made flesh come to dwell amongst us. The monster is the incorporation of the outside, the beyond, those places that are distant and distinct from us, but which originate within. So instead of being from outside of here or away from here, the monster is from here, but still has those same differences that make something other. So those could be cultural, political, racial, economic, or sexual differences. And those differences are then usually labeled as deviant and immoral, so things that are wrong with people. Here's an example. It's a historical example written by this guy, Geraldus Cambrensis, in the topography of Ireland from 1146. So this is pretty old. So look at how this makes Irish people seem different and deviant. It is indeed a most filthy race, a race sunk in vice, a race more ignorant than all other nations in the first principles of faith. These people who have customs so different from our own and so opposite to them on making signs either way with their hands or their head, beckon when they mean you should go away, and non backwards as often as they wish to be read of you. Likewise, in this nation, the men pass their water sitting, the women standing, the women also as well as the men ride astride with their legs stuck out on each side of the horse. So his description starts off by telling us how awful, filthy, and uh, faithless these people are, but then it goes in even to look at how they become monstrous in terms of gender, right? The men pee sitting and the women pee standing up. And even there's this gender difference in terms of how they ride their horses. So not only are they vile ethically and in terms of their morality, they become vile in terms of their gender identity. So that's part of how we turn people into monsters. Number five, the monster polices the borders of the possible. So the monster often stands a warning against exploration because it is something awful and different. So for example, in Jurassic Park, we get a clear warning about what happens when we mess with the DNA of extinct creatures and try to bring them back to life, right? We get eaten alive and the world is over. Similarly, even in the Odyssey written 800 years before a certain era, we see a warning of what happens when somebody doesn't follow the Greek culture, right? Polyphemus, the Cyclops, is held up as somebody who doesn't follow the cultural norms of Greece. He doesn't take good care of his guests, and he's actually a cannibal who tries to eat Odysseus. Number six, the fear of the monster is really desire. The monster is linked to forbidden practices, but linking the monster to the forbidden means that monsters also attract us. Think about it, right? You know that whenever anybody tells you you're not supposed to do anything, the first thing you want to do is do that thing. So by fearing monsters, we're also really desiring them in some ways. The final thesis is that the monster stands on the threshold of becoming. Monsters are our children, right? They're things that we make from our culture and from ourselves. They're part of us and part of something else. And so the monster is always about to be. Um, and that's the last argument that Cohen makes. So your next step 
is to choose one of these theses, so either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, and try to apply it to a monster in Sendak's text. So that could be the wild things, it could be Max, it could even be his mom. In our online discussion on Canvas, you're going to write one paragraph using one of these theses to interpret the monsters, applying textual or picture evidence and close reading analysis. And then after you post your paragraph, you're going to respond to one classmate's post with additional evidence, analysis, or questions. So that's your job tonight. Here's our Works Cited page. Thanks for listening to our video. I look forward to talking with you about these ideas in class tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.